the handle kept slipping between the rails. So they gave him new wheels with broad tyres. The other engines teased him. Look at his steamroller wheels, they laughed. You shut up, Sir Handel snorted. You're jealous. My wheels are special, like Peter Sam's funnel. Now I'll go faster than any of you. You'll never. The engines were surprised. Sir Handel's trains were usually late. Scarlo, he winked. With your grand new wheels, Sir Handel, he said gravely, you're just the engine to tackle George. Who's George? Sir Handel asked. While Sir Handel was in the shed waiting for his new wheels, workmen had come to widen the road which ran for a mile or two beside the railway. They pulled down the wall and nothing now protected the line. George was their steamroller. He chuffered to and fro making rude remarks when the engines passed. Railways are no good, he would say. Pull them up. Turn them into roads. Scarlurry had often heard that talk before and he warned the others to take no notice. But he hoped that when the two boastful engines met, he and the others would have some fun. Don't worry any more, said Sir Handel importantly, when they told him about George. Leave him to me. I'll soon send him packing. Next morning, George was standing near the halt by the level crossing. Ah, uh, he said. You're Sir Handel, I suppose. And you, I suppose, are George. Yes, I've heard of you. And I've heard of you. You swank around with steamroller wheels, pretending you're as good as me. Actually, said Sir Handel sweetly, I'm better. Goodbye. He puffed away. George chuffed. Fuming. One afternoon, Sir Handel had to bring a special load down after the last train had gone. When he reached the road, he saw George trundling home. Beep, 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 beep. George took no notice. He trundled along close to the track. There was barely room to pass. Beep, 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 beep. Sir Handel slowed and crept cautiously alongside. Get out of my way, you great clumsy road hog, he hissed. I don't move for imitation steamrollers retorted George with spirit. They lumbered along side by side, exchanging insults. No one could ever explain what happened next. George's driver says he signalled for Sir Handel to stop. Sir Handel's driver says he signalled to George. There was a crash. The brake van tilted sideways and the guards scrambled out to find George's front roller nuzzling his footboard. The two drivers were hotly arguing whose fault it was. A policeman strolled up in time to stop the argument turning to fisticuffs. And when Sir Handel's farmer came back with Rusty and Mr Hugh, they all set to work clearing up the mess. Neither engine had been going fast enough to cause much damage. So Sir Handel was able to bring his train on when George had backed himself away. Next day, the workmen put up a fence between road and railway and then went away, taking George with them. This was because they'd finished their work. But Sir Handel thought he had made George go away. He was more conceited than ever and talked everlastingly about steamrollers. Oh dear, whispered Scarlow in one evening. He's worse than ever. I'm sorry my plan was no good. Never mind, said Rusty. We'll think of something else. But they had no need to do that, for some boys came and asked Mr. Hugh if they could look at the engines. Almost at once, one called out, Look, here's the handle. He raced a steamroller last week. The roller nearly beat him, too. It was most exciting. The handle never mentioned steamrollers now.